what what is it about that history that is so meaningful to you? You know, why why does that carry such weight with you? You know, it's because I mean, it's our blood. It's in our blood, and you know, I I I work with kids. I worked with kids for thirty three years, and you know, the last couple of years, I really stressed that it's about choices. You know, from a, you know, the second you're born. I mean, there's choices. Obviously, not the conscious choices where we could audibly say stuff, but when we get into you know the four, five, six years old, it's about choices, and so when you have an opportunity to know about your culture and choose to hold on to that and, and, and be proud in a humble way, but no, it, it, it empowers you. And so it empowered me when I started to learn about my culture at a re very early age. And um, it just, it just took off from there. And um, it's something that I've never lost, you know, but the people that were around my life, including started with my mom and my dad, and my grandma and my grandpa they were they they instilled it from day one as far as us to be proud to be chicano chicano not mexicano chicano and yeah so and it just propelled and then we met you know i met ross castro through my dad he was a co-founder of the brown berets in santa barbara and um he really instilled it in us he he um he got my mom and dad to to talk us into my mom and dad taking my my brother, sister, and I to a school at UCSB when we were in elementary school, and it was called La Escuelita de Tegucio Vasquez at UCSB, and there we learned what the word Aslan meant. We learned about what happened, why this used to be Mexico. Yeah, and yeah. A lot of people don't know that. It's it's, yeah. it's funny. Yeah, Joaquin Murieta, Murieta, and so people these people you'll never hear about in the in the conventional history books, but there were heroes in our culture and it just empowered me my mom and dad said something they said you know what we want you to go to this because one day you guys are going to go to ucsb which we did and we don't want you to feel intimidated by this place so go and so for two years i think two summers we went my sister brother and i we just we got educated in chicano history 101 and that was the start and so you're asking what empowered me what what um in, what ignited my interest in our culture was that or the other things but i have some photos here from you uh, uh -oh. back in the day i'm gonna show a few of those photos if it's all right uh, yeah. for the audience yes. so this is uh let's see here so you gotta tell me was the 70s or 80s well, i was a i think a freshman at ucsb i was i was 1981 okay so 81 um got you right here that was the late 80s. That was like 88, 89. This right here is a, I, it's it's a badass picture. I got to admit. <laughs> My friend David Paglia took that photo. That was a 1990, 90, I think. 80, yeah, 90. 19, that was my 54 Chevy. My ex-wife and I owned that car. Ah, uh, 54. Yeah. There's another one. It looks Santa Barbara. Yeah, I did that artwork. Oh, okay. So you did the artwork. All right. Yeah, I'll take responsibility for it. They they rolled over, you know. But yeah, that was back somewhere in California. I I love the look of the seventies and eighties. It was it was such a good like that Chicano look, right? Uh that homeboy look. It was clean, you know, you had to sleep back hair, you know, that back then homeboys still wore trench coats. And uh I remember a lot of the older guys I grew up with, uh, they wore trench coats. And then uh, it started to fade when you got into the 90s. You didn't really see homeboys wearing trench coats anymore. But I kind of miss that. I miss that style sometimes. Yeah, there, there was a definite style that we uh, that we dressed. My my cousin Sandy from Gary Loma, she, she was very, very adamant about, hey, if you're going to represent, you got to dress sharp. So we Yeah, did. that was the thing back then. Yeah, but then you ended up getting them clothes all dirty and messy when the stuff went down. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, at least we... We look good walking into the ring, you know? <laughs>